Hi everyone, this is Krishna Vandanapu, a Power Apps Super User. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to discuss about definite and indefinite looping in Power Apps. Most of the times, the new Power App makers get frustrated that there is no way I can implement looping in Power Apps. But today I am going to walk you through on three different ways to implement looping in Power Apps. Before any further delay, let me go on to business case. The business case for this is many times app maker want to execute set of statements repeatedly to avoid repeated code blocks. Unfortunately, in Power Apps, there are no looping other than for all, which does not support incrementing or decrementing values in it. As we all know, we have out of the box function called for all that iterates through a result set when we perform filter operation or we can iterate through a collection but the drawback or limitation with for, for all is i cannot increment or decrement a variable inside this for all if we see the book definition for looping is in computer science, a loop is a programming structure that repeats a sequence of instructions until a specific condition is met. Though their implementation and syntax may differ, two of the most common type of loops are while and for loop. And if we see the structure of them is we have while loop structured as like this and for loop structured as like this. But unfortunately, none of these syntax supported in Power Apps. But we have workaround to implement looping using first end function, timer control, toggle control. What we should know beforehand to understand this methodology is how to create basic canvas app using toggle control, using timer control, using collections in Power Apps, using gallery. Last but not least, get an idea on how first n function works. What are the learnings? We definitely learn how to implement definite and indefinite looping by end of this video. I promise on that. The best use of toggle control, how to implement looping with a timer control, how to trigger another control using select function. Let's go on to demo. The first approach is implementing looping using timer control. In this business scenario, I'm trying to get the next set of business days for the selected calendar date. Let's see how it works. Assume that I have selected 17 as my calendar date and I want to get the next eight business days from this day. When I click on the start the loop and if you see it is calculating the next set of business days in a loop and if you see that the number of iterations it going through is 12. It went through 12 iterations and I got 8 business days. And if you notice that this is the timer control I am using to get this business days. Let's see how I have implemented. Before that the functions I am using as part of this approach is on timer end, repeat, duration and text. Okay, the timer control. In this approach, timer control is very crucial, very, very crucial. I have set my timer control duration as one second. Thousand is one second. And if you see the entire logic I have implemented in timer control, when you see on timer end, this is where my entire logic is written in. So first thing I am finding whether the selected date or the next day a date is a business day or not. If it is greater than one or less than seven, that is when I am calculating or that is when I am counting that as a business day and I am adding here. How I am iterating through is I am incrementing the counter here and on repeat function, repeat property of the trimer control. I am validating that whether my counter is the same as my provided number of business days what user is expecting. This way I am iterating my loop continuously using timer control. I repeat 
in this i am using only time rate control but the limitation with this approach is when you are setting the duration which means that the timer control works for only one second ensure that the business logic whatever you are writing as part of this on timer end can be completed within one second if not just increase the timer value as per your business logic criticality and this one is a indefinite loop there is no end point if i say next 15 business days also it will get the next 15 days i can iterate this loop as many number of times as i want for 15 business days the entire logic iterated for 21 number of times and i got all my 15 next 15 business days let's go to the next approach this approach is a definite approach what does that mean is my loop has a definite number of iterations it cannot go beyond that what exactly that means in this approach i am looping through my code to get the number of calendar days of a month let's say 15 days if you see it worked in eye blinking time because in this approach i'm not doing any calculation i'm getting just day of the month and if i say 45 we all know that there are no 45 days for any month so the maximum number of iterations it can go through is only 31 it cannot go beyond 31 days 31 iteration so what i'm calling this methodology as a definite methodology in this i'm using first n function a collect to collect all these days and is blank to ensure that my text box is blank or not let's see the code in this in this what i am doing is on click of this button i am iterating through my array a array with all 31 calendar days I am getting first n of provided value is blank here I am checking if there is no value as part of my text box control I am getting the first day if it is not blank I am getting whatever the value user provided and I am just iterating through that and I am just adding over there as I said before for all here I am not iterating through anything but I am iterating my logic for the definite set of times and the next approach is using toggle control this is the third and last approach this is also an indefinite approach what does that mean indefinite i can iterate n number of times in this scenario i have taken a funny example to generate a mathematical tables for the given table number and number of iterations let's see how it works I want to generate table 8 with 15 iterations. You see that I got 15th ta uh, eighth table up until 15 and when I generate when I am generating did you notice that this toggle control is on and off on and off. Let me say do that again. Because my entire logic I have implemented in on on the toggle control. Let's see what I have done as part of this. In this, I want you to understand that I'm using on change, default property and select function to invoke another control using toggle control. Let us see how I have implemented. As I said, in this, the critical one is toggle control. On change of the toggle control, I have, I have written this code block to generate the table and at the end of this, I am incrementing my variable counter to iterate through the loop and here select of that control. The end point I am checking here. How I am terminating my loop is as part of my button on select property. In this, what I am doing is I am verifying whether my counter is less than or equal to the number of iterations what user is expecting. If it is less than or equal to, then again I am negating my variable where I have set this variable as a default property for my toggle control. This will turn off and turn on my toggle control. When 
on when the toggle is changed from off to on and on to off on change property i have written my logic to generate the table i am adding all these values as to a collection and that collection i have associated with the, the gallery if you see this is how it is iterating number of times doesn't matter how much i have i provide as part of this iteration if you see this is what it is happening i will get everything and when i turn on one more value and when i turn off one more value so this entire iteration i am driving with this toggle control hope you like these three approaches if you want to connect with me this is my contact information if you like this video please like share and comment subscribe on my youtube channel to get more this kind of videos thank you